Social anxiety is on the rise, and this is also another form of anxiety. Now, more anxiety and types of anxieties and forms and shapes of that are now also being recorded. Now, what makes this experience even worse and more painful is not understanding why you feel the way that you do. Now, awareness of a problem is a problem half solved. And today, I'm going to help you to understand why you feel challenged with social anxiety and what to do about it. Hi, my name is Yvette Rose, author and founder of Metaphysical Anatomy, and welcome to today's topic. And this is all about now understanding and combating social anxiety. Now, most people that I know that are challenged with some type of anxiety, and I'm sure that you know as well, if maybe it's not even you who's challenged with anxiety, right? And most of these people, most of them, that of these types of anxieties that we have, especially social anxiety is now even more on the rise. And this is something that I have experienced myself. And you might, like I said, be in the middle of that phase and stage right now. And even if you know someone that's going through that, then listen up. Now for me, for example, in my own personal opinion, the experience of social anxiety was by far the worst for me because this sabotaged my ability to make friends and to go out during the day and even going on holiday. Right, just doing something that is fun, but unfortunately, if it involved the public, then it was a no-go for me. Right, so you know, this condition really robbed me of such a great time of my teenage years and most things in my life, actually. You know, everything, for example, now here with this condition as well has a starting point, though. And then, for example, what happens is that things don't just happen for the sake of it happening. There's either an action or an intention or something that creates an emotional or energetic physical motion in order for something to happen and to take place, meaning the onset of the anxiety, right? So now this includes in this specific case, the condition of social anxiety, which is an expression. It is a ripple effect or it's a symptom as I would call it of a much deeper root cause. Now, here are six points that I want to share with you that I noticed from working with people that had social anxiety and also through my own personal observation, having been through that phase as well. And what also then the points that I want to share with you is the points and aspects that could be stemming from this. And here also, along with the six points, I call it six points of mindfulness, right? And along and after that, I will also share four easy to follow steps that you can start to take to start tackling social anxiety right now. So when you look at social anxiety and when you take a step back from it, right, and you observe what could have happened or triggered such a strong emotional response in you, normally it is coming from your environment. Something happened, you heard something, you saw something and it triggered something in the subconscious mind, normally through an implicit memory. Implicit memory is a memory that the emotional body can feel, but you consciously don't remember it, but the emotional body does, right? So here I will discuss now the six mindfulness takeaways and then four steps that you can take to combat social anxiety. Now, takeaway number one, this kind of anxiety now can be related, for example, to trauma in the past that caused you to feel a complete sense of loss of control in your environment or within circumstances that involve people, right? So environment, public spaces, but also there were people involved. Now, the word of this condition actually says quite a lot, social anxiety, right? So when you socialize, it normally involves people, which means that people's presence in your environment is triggering a deep-seated subconscious memory from your past where you felt either, say, verbally or emotionally under attack in one way or another. And there were people in your environment. Maybe the people were the cause of the attack or it could have felt that you felt a great sense of shame or humiliation and you felt subconsciously judged by people, right? Interpreting perhaps how you think People felt about you or towards you, adding, almost like adding subconscious insult to injury. Now, 
Here is, for example, and this is, and, and apart from that, adding to that now still, you could have also felt very unprotected, right? So now there is a deep wounded part of you that associates people and that associates public spaces with the emotional stress that you felt in your negative past experiences. Now, mindfulness takeaway number two. Now, this type of anxiety can also be triggered when you perhaps gave your power away, right? You gave your power away to people or a person's judgment of you, right? Now, this can also include, for example, a judgment towards your character or something that you did or said, or even towards something that you deeply valued, something that was very important to you, right? So now a vulnerable aspect and a side of you felt attacked by people or even just by an individual, now, normally this can also be by a person or by people that were supposed to create an environment for you that should have made you feel safe. However, that was not the case, right? Your, your experience now here is what that made you feel vulnerable. And that is the moment, that is the memory that is now deeply stored in your subconscious mind and also in the emotional body. When I say mind, I mean the cognitive system, right, in your memory. But the emotional body, our physical body, also has its own set of memories. And it stores that emotional stress in different places in your body. Hence why, when you sometimes feel an emotional stress, different areas in the body flares up. And that's because your emotional body stored memories there. And those memories are being triggered. Now, in this case, the, the triggering can happen when you are around people, right? So even by just thinking about being around people or in social environments, you can actually already start to feel the anxiety starting to surface because through your body now, your emotional body, it's reacting. Your body is also reacting to the negative thought that you have. And what happens with that negative thought, even though it's just the thought, it doesn't even have to be based on an actual memory. Your body biochemically reacts to the thoughts as if though the body is actually experiencing it in the reality. Mindfulness takeaway number three. This anxiety can also now set in when you, for example, start to feel, say, comfortable, right? Then it can be triggered. Now, let me explain what I mean by this. This also could have been, for example, now a time in your life when you felt safe, you felt relaxed, and you felt calm. And then suddenly, you know, something unexpectedly came into this calm space and disrupted your state of mind, right? And this could have been disrupted by, say, an aggressive person, right? Something or someone that made you feel out of control of your once calm environment. And probably even could have left you traumatized, depending on your emotional sensitivity at that time. So you see, when you are between people and you start to feel comfortable, you can actually then start to feel the anxiety. And very, very quickly, the feeling of anxiety is now your body's way of trying to remove you from the situation or a person or people. Because it fears now, subconsciously it fears that it's going to be attacked again. It's going to be scrutinized or judged again. Or, you know, somehow something unexpectedly is going to happen again. Recreating a fear of losing control. Now that's the fear that the body has. And it's trying to protect you from reliving that same set of circumstances. Now, I'm sure that this can also explain to you why you don't always function as well for example, in a drama-free environment, right? Calmness creates the fear and anticipation also that something bad is going to happen. And then also chaos and stress causes you to revert back to your coping mechanisms, right? Coping mechanisms that feel familiar to you. And also now we are also creatures of habit, right? We're creatures of habit. <laughs> we tend to feel comfortable with what we know, meaning we start to feel comfortable feeling uncomfortable. Now, mindfulness takeaway number four. Now, social anxiety can actually sometimes also be mixed with shyness, which is another expression, ripple effect of trauma, right? Trauma associated with feeling shame. And shame is normally also a reaction to something that was maybe said or done to you that left you feeling, you know, defensive and humiliated 
and also making you feeling very emotionally unresourceful, meaning making you feel like you're lacking emotional support and also emotional guidance in that moment, not knowing how to act and react, feeling inadequate within your sense of self and your identity. Now, this can also be a big contributor, right, to the emotion of shame and being, for example, now born with, um, with these with these roles of that now rolls over into fear because shame creates fear because the fear is there to tell you don't do this don't do that because we have a fear of being shamed we have a fear of being humiliated and there's a fear of being vulnerable and being exposed which is now all tied to the shame now these are all possibilities and definitely not limited to just that now let's move on to mindfulness takeaway number five. Now in most cases, social anxiety is an end result of never feeling safe in your home environment or in a place and in a space where you are supposed to be supported, where you are supposed to feel safe, but never really did, right? So what caused you to feel unsafe, right? The list of what this could be is endless. And it could also, for example, be due to stressful relationship with your parents, with siblings. There could be deep abuse trauma. There can also be emotional abuse. There could be bullying at school or at home in your home environment. It could even be from the neighbors, right? So the, the list is endless. And over time, this will cause you to feel unsafe, regardless of where you are, regardless of where you are, right? So even if the trauma happened, say, at school, now, if you're at home, you can still feel unsafe. The changing location doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to ease the anxiety. So now even in your new environment, right? So now there's, for example, you know, new movement and this, there's new people coming in, coming and going, and now more panic and anxiety can start to kick in, right? Because you can feel that there's too much action happening. You're feeling overwhelmed because there is already an oversensitivity to, to your space, to feeling safe in your own energy field even as well. Making you also perhaps even feel that, you know, things that's coming in is beyond your ability to control, where in reality it is within your control. However, you're given to the fear of feeling that you don't have control of it, which increases your perceived chances of either then being either emotionally or physically attacked. And this is only a fear. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen. That is your body reacting to a deep, old subconscious memory, right? So your environment might not indicate to you that you are under threat, but you feel that you are. Now, mindfulness point number six. Another cause of social anxiety could also be a deep fear of abandonment trauma, which could now also be triggering for example, a deep sense of unworthiness and also loss, right? It's almost like it's like a loss of something or someone that made you feel safe. And this loss of safety caused a very big, um, it's like a big void, it's like a sense of emptiness in you, right? So and it could also, it, the, the void can also be related, for example, to your confidence, right? Having a direct impact now on your confidence. Not having this person or this object or this, this something in your life that you valued, that you draw your confidence from, right? And also then your ability to be and to feel safe and to feel protected. Now, when you look at this type of abandonment trauma and how it left you feeling could be now you feel perhaps defenseless, you feel unprotected and you feel unsafe. So deep down, your emotional body and your subconscious mind, nothing is safe, nothing can be trusted because nothing will stay. Right, so everything else now feels unstable and the possibility of losing control is always one step behind you. In reality, it's not, but you feel as if though it is. And so you react in your reality based on a fear that is not real anymore. So now, having said that, let me also now share with you, share with you powerful steps that you can take in your healing journey to start to overcome social anxiety step number one just take a breath right but take a deep deep breath as deep as you can through your mouth and then hold it for as long as you can so 
right? So you're going to hold it for as long as you can. And you might get a little bit dizzy if you do perfect, right? That's not a problem. That's normal. And then when you can't hold it anymore, exhale out your nose, not your mouth. Exhale out your nose, right? Very important that you exhale out of your nose and you will feel instantly calm. So when you are in a situation in the social environment and you're starting to feel the anxiety coming up, just, and you can, here's the cool part about it. You can do it even when you're standing in front of people, right? You can just very gently just just casually look around, have awareness of people. You're going to start feeling a little bit dizzy, but you got this. You can wing it. Poker face. Nothing's wrong. I'm fine. Just hold your breath for as long as you can and then slowly exhale out your nose and you're going to feel instant calmness. So step number two. This is also very important. Assess your environment, right? If you're really honest with yourself, do you really truly see a threat in your environment, right? In most cases, there will be no immediate threat, right? To based on what you're feeling in that moment. It is the fear of there being a threat. And, this, and that's causing you to feel the stress. Now, in that moment, tell yourself immediately, I am safe. I am in control. I am safe and I'm only feeling old feelings from the past and keep repeating this at least 10 times, right? And when you do this, the thought of being safe will start to trigger a positive biochemical reaction in your body and it will respond as if though it is now safe. Now, step number three. So you will normally feel, for example, now either the freeze instinct in response or the running away instinct being triggered in your body, which we also know as the fight or flight. Now, in this case, if, for example, if you are in a public place, do these two steps. And now what I would like you to do is then just stand up, right? And just start to jump, jump up and down, right? Just jump up and down and shake your arms, shake your hands, shake your legs, and really like even just shake your upper body, get your body to move. Because what this will do is this will immediately, immediately discharge the nervous energy that is now stuck in your atomic nervous system, right? You will start to feel calm immediately because you feel anxiety, because the tension is building up, building up, building up in the atomic nervous system, which is connected to your instinctive muscles and the instinctive parts in your brain, which is bracing you for a potential threat, which is not real. So... The anxiety gets worse because your body is not finding an outlet to discharge the energy. So go to a private room quickly or go to the bathroom and just jump, jump and shake. And at the same time, what you can also do is after jumping and shaking, hold your breath. And then as you can't hold anymore, exhale out the nose. See how you can combine all these four steps. You don't have to do them one by one. You can do them individually, but you can also combine them or do all four of them. Right, so step number four, in your mind, affirm the following affirmations. I call my power back from this anxiety. Repeat that at least three times and you will already start to feel a very powerful shift in your emotional body. Okay, guys, so I do hope that that helped you. So the, all these steps, apply them apply them, apply them, let it become it's almost like a natural reaction for you to revert back to that. And especially when you need it, just do that. All these exercises are super easy to use and you can use it at any given moment. Like even the breath exercise, it's so easy. You can just gently, gently inhale as deep as you can. People don't even see that and hold as long as you can and just exhale. So also, what you can do is you can, oh, oh, remember, you can also go through my healing your anxiety. It's actually easing symptoms of anxiety, healing meditation that's on my YouTube channel. Um, you can go to evetvideos.com or you can just go to Metaphysical Anatomy on my YouTube channel, the playlist meditations, and go grab the, the anxiety meditation there as well. That will also help you a lot. And remember to grab your copy of Metaphysical Anatomy. I talk a lot there about anxiety and root causes of it and how to start healing it and tackling it. So guys, thank you for joining me. And until next time, be the light that you are. 
Hi guys, thank you for joining me and remember to grab your copy of Metaphysical Anatomy on Amazon 679 Medical Ailment and I also wrote about the psychosomatic root causes of that and I'm spoiling it because I even added key points for you to start looking at important questions that you can ask yourself to start improving your quality of life and also remember to catch me on Instagram Yvette Rose one with the digit one and Metaphysical Anatomy on our Facebook fan page. Bye guys!